There are 69,000 leaded homes here in Singapore. The government is looking to phase out ICE cars by 2040, which means that a lot more homes in this country will be installing EV wall chargers, like this Tesla wall connector. Today, I'm going to give you a tour about how it looks like and works in a home in this country. The owner is a bit camera shy, so he won't appear in this episode, but we've had the opportunity to have breakfast with him to understand his journey, getting his Tesla. As you see, there's a Tesla Model 3 performance by my side as well as his home charging solution. So thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is Darren. Click subscribe to stay updated to more videos on Tesla. Next to me is the Tesla wall connector Gentry. It's got a charging capacity of up to 71 kilometers of range per hour. With the Gentry, the cable is 7.3 meters long. It's thinner than the older generations and more flexible. The faceplate comes by white in default but you can actually customize the faceplate by buying other faceplate colors to match your Tesla color. So you see in this home setup here, there's a couple of devices. In Singapore today, to install a wall connector, you do need to get a certified installer. You cannot buy it directly from Tesla like other countries right now. This is to comply with local TR25 regulations. So the typical installation rate would range all in from about 1.5 to 3.5K Singapore dollars. It takes usually a few hours unless there's a lot of complicated installation involved. Every home is different, so get quotations from the different certified installers, compare codes and find the best ones for you. With a typical install, you have the Tesla wall connector itself. This will get shipped to your home first and then the certified installer will come to your home to install everything else together. You've got the isolator, you turn it off to turn off the power. There's an the emergency switch button, you press it to turn it off as well. It's a bit of a redundancy. And in fact, for most of us installing the wall connector now, you probably won't need this anymore because the new 2022 TR25 certification doesn't require this anymore. So a bit less devices in your wall and slightly cheaper installation costs. Then you've got the circuit breaker just to make sure that everything is safe. So this is the core functionality that you have in most installs. This owner's home is a little bit unique. You see a huge isolator here. And you see some cables here, PVDC, because the owner actually has solar panels on the rooftop. For solar panels, it typically costs about 10 to 50,000 to install in a home, depending on the factors like the size of your home, your roof, and how much energy you need. That's why you've got a few of these devices here. Let me first show you what it looks like coming into the home. Over here, you've got the distribution box, and you see this cable here links up to the solar panels in the roof. And I'm, you're not going to watch a short clip with me on the roof taking a look at the solar panels. We hear the rooftop where you see solar panels on top of the roof. On a cloudy, rainy day like today, depending on the weather in the afternoon, you get about maybe 20, 30 kilowatts a day. And on a good sunny day in Singapore, you could probably get 50 to 60 kilowatts a day. That's enough for a normal sized household and to charge your EV as well. Next to me, you see a smart power sensor. Think of it like a smart power meter for the owner to see how much energy consumption and also generation is being made. And you can see from the picture that EVs like Tesla's consume a lot of electricity when charging. Now that you've seen the solar roof, there are also circuit breakers here just to make sure that everything is safe for the home. Now let's go back to the wall and let's put the wall connector to use on the home. To use the wall connector, we pull it up, lift it, and bring it to the car's charge port, which is in the back left of Tesla's here. When we press the charge port button, you will open the charge port, like so. And I just plug it in, like so. You can see the light's turning green, which means it's charging over here. It usually takes about one or two hours to charge if you're doing daily top-ups, because it's 71 kilometers per hour. So as the car's being charged, you can see in the front console, through the screen that it's taking 35 minutes to charge the remaining battery all the way up to the limit that the owner sets. So you can actually see it over through the screen here. The owner is a big tech enthusiast and he also got his Tesla Model 3 performance last year when Tesla first started official sales in Singapore. But when it was first launched, we didn't have the Tesla wall connector. This was only approved two weeks ago. So the owner had a prior EV charger at home. It was installed over here. Now it's removed already. One of the benefits of the Tesla wall connector for the owner is that it takes less time to actually charge his car every day. So he used to take 20 seconds unplugging his charger because with third-party EV chargers, you needed to go to your console and press unlock charger or pick up your phone, go to the Tesla app, 
and click unlock charger. With that out of the way, it's a bit easier. One thing to note about the Tesla wall connector is that once it's fully charging, overnight especially, you can't just pull it out. You see, I press the button, it doesn't work. When the car is sleeping, you've got to activate the car first before you can pull out the charger. So what do we do? We open the door handles. So now that the car is awake, you can finally pull out the charger. A long press, and then you pull it out. Like so, done. The owner installed a, a wall handle over here, so you can plug it in this side. Easy coming out, and you can see that the port's closed already. Over here, you'll see cables carrying the power from the solar panels above, connecting to this device to convert AC to DC current, to power the home and also to power the wall connector. So with solar power, it's actually a more sustainable solution. Now in Singapore, for most electricity providers, there is no peak charging. We get the same electricity rate. So with solar power, you actually sell back the electricity at a discounted rate back to your electricity provider. Singapore is a very reliable electricity grid, which means that many people who have solar panels do not need a battery pack at home. We can cost up to ten to $16,000 to install. And it takes many, many years to actually recover the cost of your investment. Because of that, all solar power is used during the daytime as much as you could. So you want to charge your EVs during the daytime or power your home as much as possible. All homes in Singapore are connected to the grid, even if you've got solar panels above. So without a battery pack at night, the electricity is pumped in from the grid to power the home for our aircon when we sleep or to charge our EVs when we need to overnight. I asked the owner, now that he has home EV charging, does he still use public EV chargers? And his answer is no, he hardly uses it anymore. With the rare exception of using the Tesla supercharger, especially on Fridays or Saturdays if he forgets to charge at home or he's driving a lot more. And I asked the owner, would non-Tesla EVs benefit from the Tesla wall connector? Actually, this uses a Type 2 charger, so it does work with most EVs. When in doubt, just check your manufacturer or your electrician just to be very sure. Most of us in Singapore stay in public housing, HDBs, or private condos, so we may not have access to home EV charging solutions like this. With that said, we have almost 2,000 public EV chargers in the country. There are around 4,000 EVs here right now, so it means a pretty healthy ratio of two EVs to one charger. EVs are going to grow and expand as adoption increases and the government is also planning to install up to 60,000 public EV chargers in the country. 40,000 in public car parks, 20,000 in private places like offices and condos. While the actual installation for the Tesla wall connector and all the required electronics takes a few hours, usually not more than half a day, one thing that we may need to wait for is actually booking a time with a licensed electrical worker. Because of high EV adoption and growing demand, it may take you a few weeks to actually get an appointment slot. For this owner, he's an early adopter, so he got installation done pretty quickly, within a week. But for many people right now, we hear that the waiting time can be up to two weeks long. So if you're looking to install an EV wall charger at home, try to do it a bit earlier before the rest of the country starts adopting it. Thank you, Michael, for the insights and the opportunity to share a practical look of the Tesla wall connector in homes here in Singapore. I believe by 2030, more than 20% of all private landed properties will have the Tesla wall connector as EV adoption accelerates. I also believe we'll see Tesla wall connectors in malls, restaurants, offices, theme parks because Teslas now make up more than 47% of all EVs in the country. If you found this video useful, please click the like button. Hit subscribe to stay updated to Singapore's transition to sustainable energy.